do this weekend. It's middle of April. We've got a few days off work for the Easter holidays, um, and the jobs are piling up. So this little break has come at exactly the right time. Um, so I'll give you a quick tour of the plot, show you where we're up to, and then just talk you through exactly what we're going to get on with today and over the next couple of days. So why don't you come and join me? As you can see, Stewie's just having a nice little rest. Dottie's come to join him in the shed. So let's just see what we've got to do today. And as I've said before, these are my brassica beds here. And I'll just show you how the brassicas are coming on. I moved them out a couple of weeks ago into the cold frame, as I spoke about on the last video. And as you can see, they have come on fantastically well. So much so that they're actually they're outgrowing the cold frame now. So I really need to get them out um, and get them in the ground. I'll show you where they're going. These beds all along here are going to be my brassica beds this year. Um, now most of them that you see in the cold frame are cauliflower and cabbage. So they're going to come in this top end. Um, also, in regards to the brassicas, I've got some on the go here. Um, I think that's Ethiopian kale. I've got some kohlrabi, which grew last year, there. I've got some sprouts there. Um, and I have got, oh, I've got some more sprouts in here also. So the sprouts are gonna go in this bottom bed. Um, I'm open to get two, four, six, eight. I'm open to get eight to 10 in that bed there, which used to house the strawberries. So that's gonna be my, my sprout bed and then the rest of the brassicas are going to be spread out amongst these um, and you can see these poles I've got here which I've spoke about in the past this is simply to keep my um, butterfly net on top so I'll spread I've got a butterfly net that completely covered that far big bed there where my brassicas were last year and the dimensions are similar so they that should be able to cover all one two three four all five of these beds here so that's the plan for the brassicas today. Um, I'll just go back in there. I've also, my spring onions, they really need to come out as well. Now the plan for the spring onions, I've already got some in the polytunnel, but for those sown that you've just seen there, they're gonna go into this carrot bed here. Um, just hopefully as a deterrent along with the mesh for the carrot root fly which decimated me last year um, now the carrots that are sown in here at this end of the bed I don't know whether that can show up on the camera but they've all started to germinate and it's probably time to start thinning them out slightly I've also got to do a bit of weeding in there so that's going to be pulled back also this weekend spring onions are going to go in and the carrots are going to be thinned out and then I may sow some more drills of carrots in there um, I just noticed when I come this morning my first potatoes are starting to show in my tub there we go now we're pretty much moving on to our last frost date now and the weather forecast going forward it's been really it's been really positive um, it's going to be mild now for at least a week so I think we're pretty much past our last frost date um, so that's the brassicas I've got to do it's the carrot bed got to be thinned out some more sowing and the spring onions in I've also got to get on with these my peas my gutter sown peas I mean they have done fantastically well as you can see even after the visit of the uh, the mice a few weeks ago the, um, the replacement peas that I sown to catch up I've done exactly that they're all well on so them gutter sown peas today or at least this weekend there's so much to do then it's gonna go over here onto my pea frame so that's another job to do um, I'm making it sound like I don't want to do these jobs, but I cannot wait to get stuck in. So, oh, and if we look there, we've got some sweet peas. 
them sweet peas there they're going to go over here but you can see the sweet pea frame at the back of the bench creates a beautiful screen so that's what I'm going to get started with today and over this weekend and no doubt I'll find more and more jobs um, that I haven't quite remembered at the minute um, so I'm going to get on with all of these I'll film it um, and then hopefully it'll be something that'll be uh, enjoyable to watch um, I probably won't do it in real time because it'll take forever now the dogs are barking at somebody so I'll best go and see who's there see you in a minute so folks I'm back right I'll just show you what we've got out here this is what we've got going in the bed now today we're going to, we've got some dwarf green kale we've got some uh, green calabrese as you can see these brassicas are looking so so healthy um, we've got cauliflower snowball for that bed I've probably sown more than I need but that's usually the way with those gardeners um, I've got some cauliflower all year round that's cauliflower clapton I've never grown them before but they look really really healthy and really really vigorous so I'm looking forward to see how they go um, and over here we have some golden acre cabbage they look great and what have we got in here uh, oh more golden acre so obviously that's going to be our cabbage bed cauliflower cauliflower and then green calabrese and kale and as I said earlier, the uh, the end bed will be saved for the sprouts, which are not as far on as these guys here. So I'm going to get cracking on that now. And you'll probably come back to me when that's done. Um, I may film just one of these going in so you can see how I do it. I tend to just, if you look at these, it's quite nice deep pots, these. You've got really, really good root development. So what... I'll find I'll probably do is maybe just fill in one of them um, and what I do is just create a hole for the plug um, I put some lime garden lime in it drop that into the hole just to ward off any club root which one of the old gardeners who's got an allotment on here told me about when I first started last year and all my brassicas was in there and he said make sure you treat the the hole that you're planting into with some lime um, to keep the club root away which I did and it worked perfectly well um, as I said all my cabbages, cauliflowers, calabrese, broccoli they all done fantastically well um, and I didn't get any club root at all which wasn't something I knew much about last year but I know a little bit more about it now um, so I'm going to get on with that, film a bit of that and then you can see how that looks and then um, might pop into the greenhouse after that um, and just see, as I said, I've got me spring onions to do. Oh, I'll just give you a quick update. I think a video back, or a couple of videos back, I did my um, Blue Lake climbing beans. And as you can see, they germinated really, really well. They're all just starting to pop up. And also my um, dwarf French beans. Can you just see the tops there? Now these ones, my pumpkins here and my dwarf French beans I've been bottom watering just like some of my, t my tomatoes but um, with these trays uh, I just they're just the wrong size to fit in these trays to be able to bottom water so I've been top watering them and they just seem fine I just make sure I don't flood them um, but they seem to, to have come off fine there's no um, no seed rot as evidence yeah it seems to be all okay even here we can still see all just starting to come up nice so that's great um, I've been bottom water in my uh, my chilies my peppers they're doing great I'm really happy with them uh, some flowers are doing well over there I mean everything in here just looks so vibrant and green my marigolds which are going to go in my polytunnel um, for a bit of companion planting again doing fine my tomatoes 
uh, doing way way better than expected and way further on than I, I expected I know I did sow them quite early took a chance but as I say they've done really really well and um, again these are all being bottom watered which is always always best for these type of plants if you can get enough trays and if you've got enough space for me space is always critical I'm always struggling with it but there we are in the greenhouse and um, so what I'll do now as I said in the mic film one I'll start to get all of these brassica beds filled um, and the plot really will then come alive so I'll get cracking on that um, and then hopefully you guys will come back and then um, them beds will look great see you in a minute <coughs> hi guys right really important thing when you're putting brassicas in is to make sure it goes into really firm ground now these beds here had onions in last year and um, they're really quite soft really really nice but and soft the compost on them so a big important job that I need to do now is firm that down before the brasses first go in and the best way of doing that is this might look a bit silly but it has to be done it really does look silly but it needs to be done because they like nice firm ground they don't like to be waving about in the wind especially with all that leaf Right, I'm glad that's over with and I don't think anybody witnessed it either as I say these leaves are so big they act like sails and they can blow around a lot and it really doesn't do the plants any good so you need to firm them right in um, and bury them quite deep similar to like you do with tomatoes and peppers and what have you so I'll get cracking on this now I'll show you how I do one I'll just show you this very quickly In here, I just have a mix of general purpose compost, but I've mixed in with it some chicken manure just to give the, uh, the plants a little head start when they go in the ground because they've been in some really, really nice compost grown away happily, as you can see. And um, so when they go in the ground, I like to give them a little bit of extra feed till they get established. So I don't know whether you can see that. That's just chicken or turkey manure in pellet form. I mix that in, create the hole, drop a load of that in, put the plant in nice and deep, and then that gives them a really head start. So I'll get cracking on the first one now. Right guys, I've got um, all my stations are prepared now. Um, each of them has been treated with uh, just some garden lime and just my own mix of general purpose compost and uh, chicken manure pellets just to give them a little, a little boost, a little head start while they get established in the ground. So I'll put the first one in. Um, show you how I do that, and then um, and then I'll, I'll switch it off. I'll do the rest of them, and then you guys can come back and see how this bed looks. And then I'll just repeat this process today in all of the beds until I've got all of my um, 
all of my brassic is in, ready for the season. So I'll do this first one now. So what we've got, we've got cabbage, golden acre, primo. So I don't know whether you guys can see that there, but the root development's really, really good. Plants look really, really healthy. Lovely and green leaves. Now once all of these go in today, I will be protecting this entire area with um, butterfly netting. Uh, because otherwise the cabbage whites, when they're around, they'll be straight onto these. And before you know it, they'll be decimated by caterpillars. Um, and if it wasn't the caterpillars, we have lots and lots of wood pigeons here that just sit around on the um, telephone lines, just waiting for the nice new brassicas to go out. And then down they come. And you can come back and within a day, everything will be gone. Um, so I always make sure I protect them. I'll do this one first. To the station, treated it with the lime and with the extra feed, and then I push this right in as far as I can get it. Nice and deep, um, and then firm it in as I can. And as you can see, that's quite firmed in really well now. So when the wind comes, that should be okay. Okay, so I'll get on with the rest of these now, um, and I'll bring you back with it's done. See you in a sec. Okay, guys, here's my first plastic bed done. Um, they're all planted really deep. They've all been treated with lime and a little bit of extra feed. And what I'll do now is give them a really, really good water and, um, and I mix a little bit of lime in with the water just so they get a, um, just plenty of that around the roots uh, as I say, just to ward off the potential of um, club root so I'll give these a good water now oh, and one little tip, if you are using garden lime please wear gloves I haven't done anything with the lime on here without wearing gloves the gloves are off now but I've wore gloves while I've handled the lime so make sure you do that because it's not great for the skin. So give these a good water now. And then that'll be this bed done. But just in the middle here, I've got three stations, one, two, three, where I've put a little bit of the um, dwarf green kale. Like most gardeners, space is a priority. And uh, I'm sowing the kale, but I didn't really have anywhere in mind for it to go, so I'm just interplanting it with some of the other um, some of the other brassicas. the rest of the beds, get the net on, um, and that will have been a good day's work. So I um, hope you've enjoyed the video on the um, what I've done with my brassicas. Hope you're all keeping well. Hope the weather's good where you are so you can carry on with your gardening. And a um, big thank you to everybody who's watched my videos and subscribed. Um, the last couple of weeks uh, the subscribe count's gone, gone up quite a bit so it's really really good and really happy. I'm not, my viewers, uh, my viewing count has gone up as well, so I'm doing something that somebody wants to watch, which is nice to know. Um, so again, thanks everybody for tuning in, and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.